So um, if you want, I can just go into telling you about the products and then we can go from there. Yeah, that'd be great. So we heard the CES 2021, the online CES. Yes, exactly. So uh, the first thing that I have to show for you today is this PX701-4K projector. Um, this is a home entertainment projector with a full 4K resolution of 3200 ANSI lumens. And uh, one of the really cool features of this projector is that it actually has a mode that allows for a native 240 hertz refresh rate. So um, is that it connected is to something? Can you bring it up to the camera a little bit or? Sure. Yeah. So, so it's like for gamers or what is a 240 hertz? Yes, exactly. So this would be, this would have uh, direct applicability to gamers, specifically uh, PC gamers uh, should be able to connect to the HDMI 2.0 ports on here and uh, get to 240 Hertz uh, at 1080p. Is it one of the uh, first uh, consumer grade 4K projectors that's 240 Hertz? Uh, I, I don't know if it's the very first one, but uh, certainly it's the first one that we've offered. Um, and uh, if we, we believe that it is the world's fastest uh, projector in terms of response time. So um, the input lag on this is actually under five milliseconds. That's um, really amazing. So you can get the three, uh, 150 inch uh, gaming uh, room and just game like crazy at 240 Hertz, 4K. You need to have a, hopefully a fast setup to be able to support yes, that. Yes, we have very fast setup. I will say uh, when it is in 240 Hertz mode, it, it will be running at 1080p instead of 4K, but at 4K mode, you can run it at 60 Hertz. 60 Hertz. Uh, but if you're watching movies, does it have a, a variable? Uh, of, uh, does it go down to 24 or is it just gonna do 60 or 120? Uh, that's a good question. Mia, are you, uh, do you know if this has a dedicated 24 uh, Hertz mode for that? Yeah, uh, it depends on what the the, uh, the, tr the true output can be uh, 4K, but it really depends on the, your content, right? What's nice. what's the content the source? But normally that it's the, if your your source your content is 4K and then output is 4K. And does it uh, have HDR and all this stuff? Yeah, this one comes with HDR. Yes. Uh, is there a price? I hope it's less than 2,400. 2000 you mean i don't know why i said that uh but uh hopefully you know what? It's, it's you're gonna be price? really surprised that the price is actually below one grand so it's uh a99 so it's a very affordable wow. 4K, one of the most affordable 4k projectors on market and at the lowest input lag is it true that uh, uh viewsonic has had pretty good uh, market share in the 4k projectors uh, yes, we do. We do have pretty good share in 4K projectors, um, especially because we are, what we're trying to do is to provide a big screen experience in high resolution at a very affordable price. Uh, compared to a lot of our competitors, we offer even better specs in terms of resolution, brightness, while our price is more affordable. Nice. And do you have another projector also or just a we bunch do. of displays? Yeah. Now, let me grab this. So this is a much smaller projector um, than the other one. This is actually the M2E uh, projector and it is portable. So it, it is designed to be a portable projector. You can throw this thing in your bag and it won't get damaged. It's got a cover over the lens. This is a 1080p projector with 1000 um, LED lumens and 400 ANSI lumens. Um, this is meant as a really cool entertainment piece. So it's got built in, uh, let me show you there built-in Harman Kardon speakers, uh, and also has uh, uh, kind of the best uh, complement of I.O. Um, because we know that it's gonna be using a lot of mobile devices, so that's why it's got USB-C, it's got a full-size USB, a full-size HDMI, um, comes with a remote as well. Um, and this one has uh, Bluetooth in and out, is that correct, Mia? Yeah, it has Bluetooth in and out, yes. Okay, so yeah, if you wanted to um, say you were getting video from something like a streaming stick and you wanted that audio to go somewhere else, the, the Bluetooth output would allow you to run the audio to an external Bluetooth speaker. So if you didn't want to use the ones in here, um, you still have the ability to wirelessly send that to another device. Nice. One issue that I've seen with Bluetooth, uh, which I think could be the perfect match for some of these uh, projectors, is sometimes there's an audio sync issue or something like that. Do you have some way to make, make sure that it's perfect sync? That's a good question. <laughs> um, are you familiar with that, Mia? Yeah. Well, there's always going to be some issue, um, but ours is like standard. Uh, 
Bluetooth 4.2. So it depends on the version. I, I cannot guarantee you like 100% all the Bluetooth um, would work, but just make sure that if you follow our, um, the version we have is Bluetooth 4.2. But one thing I was wondering is sometimes maybe there's a few milliseconds of lag or delay in the sound, but maybe in your, hopefully in your settings, there's a way to adjust that, or maybe it's, hopefully it's just perfect uh, whenever people connect their Bluetooth speakers or right. Bluetooth headphones. Right. So you don't see the sound just a little bit after the, the mouth moving, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And then you have a lot of uh, 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 monitors, PC monitors behind. Yes. So uh, we have a sort of a full complement of different monitors for different customers in different use cases. So um, let me get up here so I can show you this first one, kind of get out of the way. Um, this one here is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. In fact, let me turn it slightly so you can see it a little bit better. So this is a um, 34 inch ultra wide uh, monitor. This has a 3440 by 1440 resolution. Um, which is very, very high for the 34 inch ultra wide class. You usually don't see this until you get into more of the higher end ultra wides. Um, but we expect the screen price of this uh, below $400. Um, so and this will actually be uh, a very interesting uh, entrant into that marketplace because typically for this type of feature set, you actually have to pay a lot more. It's also a full ergonomic monitor. So full height adjust is in there as well as uh, tilt and swivel. Um, doesn't pivot because it's so big. Uh, but it does have all the other uh, ergonomic uh, complement uh, with the stand. So uh, pretty excited about that. It's an IPS with a 420 nit brightness. So a very, very high screen performance on that monitor. Let me adjust here for just a little bit. That it's a very immersive work. thing to have an ultra wide, right? For gaming sometimes. Yes, for gaming. And uh, this one is a, usually if you want to do an immersive uh, gaming ultra wide, what you'll do is you'll curve it uh, so that, um, you know, the, the screen is kind of going all the way around you. Um, this one is a flat one. So it's uh, a little bit more aimed at productivity, side by side productivity. So you can have one window here and then a different window on the other side. Um, that, that's sort of where the best use case for that monitor is. Um, moving down, we have this one right here. Uh, this is our VP. 3286-8K. This is a 8K monitor that'll be coming out later in the year. Um, it'll be an 8K monitor that is focused at sort of the professional that is doing a lot of high-end photo work. So it is 99% RGB, a uh, full color calibrated from the factory. And uh, one really cool feature is it comes with this little cup. This will actually live on the base. There's a little spot for it to sit. And uh, this is an early, uh, version of it. It'll change by the time we come to production, but um, what this will do is it kind of lets you control the on-screen uh, controls, the display, so if you need to change color modes or anything, very easy to control it. And then the other cool thing is this is actually a screen calibrator. So this thing, you put it on top of the screen, and anytime you need to recalibrate your monitor, you have a calibrator that comes with the monitor, and it just lives on the base. So you, you never have to worry about keeping your monitor calibrated. We we include it in the box uh, with the monitor. Because now in uh, 2021, there's uh, e even more 8K cameras coming out, consumer 8K cameras, even smartphones can record 8K. Is it also uh, suitable for the 8K video editing kind of market? Yes, it would be suitable for, for video editing as well. We actually have a, um, a companion series. So this is the 86 series, there'll be a 76 series that's a little bit more focused to uh, a video production because that one uh, targets the DCI P3 color gamut, which is really a very common work uh, format gamut for uh, video editing purposes. Um, this one's more focused on the Adobe RGB, which is more for photography and print work, um, but absolutely it can be used for that. So, so you... it could be great for color grading. On that exactly, part. exactly. And uh, 32 inch is, uh, is, is a very compressed 8K, but uh, I mean, on the yeah. desktop. Yeah, absolutely. It'll have, it'll have very, very high pixel density, absolutely. Do you have 8K projectors coming out? Uh, I don't, I, I'm not aware. You haven't of any, announced anything, right? I haven't, I'm not aware of any 8K projectors. Yeah, not, not at the moment. It really depends on Texas and Truman's chipset. Hopefully they announce something and the, then you have it uh, later before CS 2022, right? Right, but hopefully we'll make a 4K projector more affordable and a more popular. That'll be the first mission. Can you make the 4K projector the small size, the portable one? 
or is it's, it's limited uh, to 1080 for now? Well, for now, the, the one that we're showing you is 1080p. Um, it will be kind of difficult to make a 4K in such a small compact form factor. The reason is because of brightness and also the thermal. Because the, you know, if it's a 4K, but you don't have high brightness, it won't really justify if you can only, you know, it's a 4K, but you can only limit it to a certain very small size of the uh, image screen, then it won't uh, justify the 4K. So I've always yeah. wanted to have a 4K Joy B. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry, that's another company. Sorry. Yeah. I know. Hey, actually, yeah. I worked with you on Joy B before. Yeah, it was it's like uh, 10 years ago. I did the Joy B uh, GP1 video. Yeah, I don't think they have a, a 4K version of a Joy B. It's, I think they still call it a GP something. Uh, yeah. They have GPV or I don't, V1. Yeah, yeah. but I think we have better, um, yeah. we better actually, ViewSonic is better in terms of the portable LED projector lineups. Mm -hmm. We have a more fuller lineups in, from 1080p to uh, 480. So, and we have, we incorporate a lot of other features that the other company they don't have such as the hard and common speakers. And also we have a lot of smart projectors, smart portable projectors. Um, so if you are looking for LED uh, mini or Pico projectors, ViewSonic definitely has the most com complete lineup. Do you have any with a, a Chromecast or Google TV? Yeah. Not yet, right? Uh, It'd be nice to have this uh, stuff integrated. Not, not at the moment. So you need to, to work with the, the TV stick, the Google TV Just connect stick. Connect one, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. All right. It's like the, the little projector you have on your picture there. It'd be nice if it was 4K. Maybe eventually uh, Texas Instruments will do some magic. Right, hopefully. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what happened in 2021 or 2022. Yeah. And uh, Ray, you, you have also other product launching there? Uh, yeah, so um, kind of moving down the, the line now, this one's actually one that's already been on the market for a little while, but uh, we, we brought it along because it is a very significant product for us. Um, this is our TD1655 uh, portable display. So uh, this is a 15.6 inch uh, portable monitor, IPS. Um, it runs on uh, USB type C primarily. Uh, let me show you those ports right there, but it does also have an HDMI. So. Um, Really nice productivity, especially on the go. If you need a really flexible work environment and you're do, trying to find an open do space. Do people connect their smartphones to that? Like uh, run Samsung DeX or, or the Huawei uh, uh, PC mode? They can run it directly off this, uh, from the smartphone, right? Yes, yes. It is, it is up to um, the amount of power that uh, the phone can supply. So there are probably are some phones where if you try to connect a full screen to it, it can't give enough power. But uh, we tried it with a with a pretty late model Galaxy and didn't have any issues. And it was able oh. to run. So it actually draws the power from the USB. There's no battery inside. Correct. There is no battery inside. However, in terms of power, we did include a 60 watt power adapter, uh, which is a lot more than it needs. And the reason why is because uh, with a 60 watt power adapter, you connect it to the wall, you connect the USB-C to this. Uh, this will only take about seven of those 60 watts and then the other uh, watts will go to your laptop. So it'll actually charge your laptop just with a little small included charger that we include with this. And is there a price, uh, is, is a good affordable price for this device, for this display? Yes. We have two models. We have a touch and a non-touch. This one is touch, 10 point capacitive touch. Uh, this one is uh, a 23, or uh, sorry. This one is a 239.99. Uh, and then the non-touch is 179. Right. And it comes with the screen protector there? It does. Magnetic. So right here on the front, uh, this is magnetic. So it just, uh, oops, it lined up correctly. That's my bad. It lined up right there, and then it'll protect. Nice. All right. Uh, and then moving down a little bit, or did you have any other questions? No. On the floor? Okay. Moving down here, we have our Elite XG320U. Uh, this is a, our newest entrance to the Elite lineup. We're targeting a release around summertime. Uh, this is a 32-inch 4K with 144 hertz refresh rate. And uh, it's notable because it is the first, it will be the first ViewSonic monitor with HDMI 2.1. Uh, and this one will actually have dual 2.1 ports, uh, as well as a DisplayPort 1.4a. So um, this monitor is perfect for these next generation consoles that are coming around that support the 4K high refresh rate. Um, so uh, we expect to have full support of those as well when it comes out. 
Um, and also on, on the gaming PC side, uh, again, support up to past 120 goes all the way to 144. Um, it is an HDR monitor as well. So 600 nit HDR uh, is certified and supported. And this one is an AMD uh, FreeSync Premium Pro monitor. Uh, as well. So um, the adaptive sync technology is there as well. But because you are two, uh, HDMI 2.1, does that mean you also adapt to the other sync systems that the, the one from NVIDIA and uh, like as part of the standard, like the variable refresh and all that, uh, or what you call it, the low lat latency? Yeah, so that uh, that standard, so there's two standards there. There's the, the NVIDIA one is G-Sync and that's uh, typically supported on the display port ports. Uh, I believe G-Sync is supported on the display port. It's not supported on the HDMI. Is that correct, Jason? Nope, we might have lost Jason again. Yeah. That's all right. Um, you typically, typically you won't get G-Sync on an HDMI, whereas FreeSync you will. And then the other standard you were mentioning is um, uh, HDMI variable refresh rate or VRR. Um, that is part of the HDMI standard and that that uh, is supported by the next generation consoles and it shouldn't have any issues on here as well. Nice. And is it going to be a good price? Uh, we don't know. We, we're not ready to announce pricing at this point. Um, we, we do believe that there have been some high refresh rate 4K uh, monitors on the market that are very, very high end. Uh, we're definitely trying to undercut that pricing by quite a bit. What would be nice is uh, if there's some nice cloud cloud gaming systems that would support the whole 4K 144 hertz. So people don't have to invest huge amounts of money in a huge desktop gaming machine to get the full quality of this display. Yeah, I agree. And uh, uh, I don't know of any, so the limitation there right now is not even really the service so much as uh, I'm not aware of any streaming boxes from Google or anybody else that have HDMI 2.1, but if they bring them out and they update them, then sure, there's no reason why they couldn't do that. Nice. Uh, and then the very last one we have there at the end, that is the uh, VG2440V. Um, that is a 24 inch um, sort of business and work from home monitor that's notable because it has a built in uh, camera on top. So uh, we've had a webcam uh, monitor before, but uh, we, we wanted to bring an updated one to the market, a little bit better technology. Uh, so this one has a built in shutter. So if you're not working, you don't want anyone to see it, you just put the shutter. And this camera can tilt forward and backwards uh, by five degrees independently of the monitor. So you can tilt it down and up without having to adjust the monitor, without having to mess up any of your perfect ergonomics on your monitor. And what's the resolution of the web, web camera? Uh, the webcam is a full HD webcam. And uh, so 1920 by 1080. And uh, the monitor is also 1920 by 1080. So they, they kind of complement each other. Nice. It'd be nice to have a 4K camera on top of the 4K display and an 8K <laughs> yeah. camera on top of the 8K display. That, that might need to be the, the next generation then. It's, 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 it's quadruple. It's definitely something that would be good in, uh, in this age of uh, everybody video conferencing. Uh, people, I mean, you're matching the resolution of the screen over there. And 1080p is actually better than many, it's better than all the laptop webcams. But yeah. Yeah, a lot of laptop webcams are, are still like around 720. So yeah, uh, we think we'll get, you'll get better visual fidelity with one of these. And, and like you say, we've had huge demands from uh, education and enterprise that need this type of a solution. Nice, awesome. So thanks a lot for showing all this cool stuff. The CS 2021 is interactive, is online. No problem, happy to do it. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks Mia and everybody for this video. Thank you. Just let us know if you need any more information.